job, Lauren. Okay, I got it. Dad. Okay, don't forget to carry the one. Dad. Okay, that was delicious. Thank you. Right, hold on there, kiddo. Dad. The cheese. The cheese. There you go. Okay, just one more. Hold your trophy up a little bit higher. Good morning, good morning, good morning. It's time to rise and shine. Mm, Dad. I love it. Um, no. Dad. Dad. And they were here first. So Dad. We... So you want to go catch a movie at like 7.30 or something? <sighs> Dad. And one more. Okay, one more. Wait, 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 come on, just one more, one more. Dad. I'm so proud of you. Now you just gotta get a job. Dad. You look beautiful. Oh, Dad. Uh, and stand just a little closer together and move just a little bit to the left, uh, my left, uh, a little more. Dad! So our scripture this week from Proverbs 22 talks about having a good name. Proverbs 22.1 says, A good name is more desirable than great riches. To be esteemed is better than silver or gold. And Proverbs 22.1 is not talking about a good name built on a successful career or even wealth. It doesn't come from celebrity or fame in which the culture is so obsessed. And it's not based on physical beauty or having a good PR person <laughs> to put your name out there. A good name is something earned over many years from people who know you well. <laughs> it is a name built on integrity, on honesty, and love, and humbleness, and responsibility. And even when circumstances change in life, a good name remains. It is there. It is solid. Because it's based on character and the affections of others rather than popularity or wealth, which can be lost. A good name, a name that comes out of somebody's mouth with affection. A name like, Dad... <laughs> Would my children, Lily, Sophie, Annabelle, and Rosie, say, Dad, it is out of affection and love. The girls adore their dad. It is because he's invested himself into their lives. He tells the girls as often as he can, I love you. There's not a day that goes by I don't hear that out of his mouth to them. And he lets them know all the time, do you know how smart you are? Do you know how beautiful you are? And they say, Dad. <laughs> he takes times to go on adventures with them, road trips to Michigan State games. He loves to take them fishing. <laughs> and he even has a worm farm that they started together so that they have bait. 
He's taught them how to ride a motorcycle, and if it was up to me, they'd still be wrapped in bubble wrap, painting pictures with me, that's all. <laughs> He's also been in charge of making s'mores with them ever since they've been little. When they want s'mores, they know who to go to. The girls say, Dad, so many times throughout the day. I mean, if Ron walks through the room and farts really loud, the girls giggle, and they're like, Dad! <laughs> the girls are tired and want to snuggle. They'll come up to him, and even Lily still does that, and she's taller than me, and says, Dad, I want to snuggle. The girls want to play baseball or golf or basketball or want to go swimming. They'll yell across the yard, Dad, come play with us. <laughs> and when Ron puts on his leading hoser, hosen, <laughs> he grew up in um, Frankenmuth, Michigan, where everybody owns a pair. When he puts them on and goes in public, the girls groan, Dad. Dad is one of those good names that is worth more than any riches. <laughs> the book of Proverbs points this out. A good name is more, worth more than riches. The book of Proverbs is found in the Old Testament. It's grouped with Ecclesiastes and Job's as one of the wisdom literatures. It is wisdom in which we are taught how to live. Wisdom liter literature just seeks to teach lessons based on life experience, practical life experience, and it also relies heavily on our relationship with God. Proverbs 1 7 says, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and it's repeated all throughout Proverbs. I've always called Proverbs the fortune cookie book. I always felt like you could take just one verse at a time and stick it in a fortune cookie, and you could open it and read it and feel like you just read something that's going to guide your life take our six verses, um, one of them says, I mean, think about opening a fortune cookie, pulling out the paper, it says, the prudent see danger and take refuge, but the simple keep going and pay a penalty. <laughs> ah, let's open up another one. Humility is the fear of the Lord. Its wages are riches and honor and life, right? So you read those, and you, they're meant to take piece by piece. And often, scripture, you need to take context, context, context. This, you can take one and read it and study it and then begin to look at who wrote it, where did it come from. So, who did write um, Proverbs? King Solomon, who is the son of King David. What I remember most about King Solomon can be found in 2 Chronicles 1. I remember that King Solomon was one who longed to know God and to know God more. And when God appeared to King Solomon, God says, ask for whatever you want, and I will give it to you. And King Solomon didn't ask for wealth, riches, or honor. What did he ask for? He asked for wisdom. In his, in his words, he asked for wisdom so he could lead God's people. And God respected this. And he gained this great wisdom that he has written down word for word. And in these little easy-to-remember poems, his hope that parents passed down their wisdom to their children, generation to generation. Start children off on the way they should go, and even when they're old, they will not turn from it. Solomon longed for the people of God, the children of God, to build 
strong character and to seek to have a good name. A good name said with affection like the word dad. <laughs> this week, Ron, and Ron received a phone call from his work with bad news. Um, I was out jogging. I was two miles out when he called me, and he says, well, I need, I need to talk to you. And I said, well, what's up? Are you, are you okay? And I stepped over on the side of the road. It was really hot out, and he's said, well, my work called me and let me know that they were letting me go. <laughs> I lost my job. And I stood by the side of the road just in shock, just shock. I mean, just like that, our life and all that we've worked towards and that everything that felt solid and right, it all felt shaky and full of ambiguity. <laughs> Ron no longer has the name of senior supervisor, <laughs> whatever his title was. I made it home, and Ron and I stood in the kitchen and began to talk, and began to talk about what, our, what we could do, what our worries were, what our hopes were, what we felt we were blessed with at this time in this position, and some of our fears. In the middle of that conversation, um, if you're a parent, you never make it through a conversation without interruption. One of the girls came around the corner and said, Dad, and wanted to ask him something. And all in that moment, I thought, that title, that good name can't be taken away. That name rem remains. Dad, it still came out with full affection and love. <clears throat> A good name is more desirable than great riches. Thinking of all the ways children say the name of dad with affection, I wonder how the name of Jesus came out of the mouths of his disciples. Those who adored him. The name of Jesus is a good name. I mean, do you ever say Jesus and just melt into it? Because you know how good a name that is. A name not built on wealth not on physical beauty. And, and during his time here on earth, he fell in and out of fame and celebrity. One moment the crowds loved him, the next they were yelling, crucify him. But during the time of ups and downs on this earth, Jesus' name remained good. good. A good name is based off of character and the affection of others. Think about how those who loved him said his name. When Jesus kneeled down with the woman who was going to be stoned to death, he kneels down with her and saves her life. You can almost hear her whisper out in desperation and devotion, Jesus. When Jesus walked on water, he could almost hear out of the mouth of the disciples, Jesus, <laughs> Jesus, Jesus. When the woman washes Jesus' feet with her tears and her hair, you can hear the affection and the hope, Jesus. And when Jesus shows grace to Peter after Peter, Peter had denied him three times, <laughs> Jesus says his, um, Peter says his name with humility and love. <sighs> Jesus. And when Jesus is whipped and hung on the cross, and the woman who had set, spent so many years along his side, and they cried out, Jesus! And after the resurrection, 
after the resurrection when <laughs> he appeared to the women and the, the disciples in the upper room. Can you imagine the name out of wonder and joy that bumbled, bubbled up out of them as they said, Jesus. The good name of Jesus can never be lost, changed, or tarnished. No matter the circumstances, the name of Jesus remains good. A good name. Because it is a name built on character, love, selflessness, servanthood, humbleness, power, sacrifice. Can I get a muffled amen out of your masks? So back to the good name of dad. For Father's Day, the, the term of affection isn't always in the form of dad. When I, I was 17, when I last said dad, when my dad died of alcoholism at 46, since then that, that name has not come off my tongue. Ever since then, there's been a hole the size of Indiana in my heart. I don't know how you ever fix that fully. And it hit me yesterday. I was driving with Ron, and um, John Chastain and has been building a chicken coop out in Sarah's yard, and Brian's been coming over to help and check on it. And we were driving, and I said, I want a dad to build a chicken coop in my yard. <laughs> just thinking of how neat that has been. And I began to realize that God has put people in my life that have earned a good name. And I say their name with affection, and they probably don't even know it. So I may not have a dad, but I have a John Chastain, and he probably doesn't even know it. Um, I know... In a long week. <laughs> I know you worked tirelessly on the parsonage before we moved here. You didn't build a chicken coop, you built the inside of my house. And you climbed to my crawl space through sewage water to fix a pipe at Christmas because nobody else could get out there. <laughs> Double amen. So when I say John Chastain, I have so much affection. It's a good name. <laughs> I think of, of Brian. <laughs> He's always one phone call away from help. <laughs> I need help with this. Um, I need a prayer for this. My children don't have my dad as a grandpa, but they just adore you. They just adore you, and whenever you're over there, they're like, Brian's over there, and they run and flock to you. So we say your name with affection as, as Brian <laughs> and John Knobble. He's been by my side from the very beginning, <laughs> um, never left. And he's always a phone call away if I'm struggling. I'll say, hey, will you listen for a minute? And he always listens, and he always builds me up. And my kids affectionately know him as Johnny Connie. <laughs> <laughs> they love Johnny Connie. I mean, there's so many names, Irvin, who I can call up at a drop of a hat and say, hey, make me a thousand butterflies out of cardboard and prime them. He's like, okay, stay up all night and do it. Or any other big project, he'll, he'll drag, like, logs out of a creek for me and build props to hang my butterflies on. Um, a lot of affection when I say your name. In the little day you snuck... Um, the, the wind, um, northwest, east, south thing on my fence as a little butterfly, he made it. The day you snuck that out there, just that 
means the world to me. <laughs> Danny, you've um, also been there for the drop of the hat to do all the technology stuff, to do Justin's funeral. You've been here. And so when I say Danny, it's a good name. <laughs> There's so many good names. There's so many good men in this world. And you may not know it, but you are father figures. And for a girl who has the whole the size of Indiana in her heart, that's gotten smaller by living here. I have a great appreciation for the gift that God has given me. So this Father's Day, I want you to think about the good names in your life, the dads, <laughs> the Johns, the ones you've come to adore and have great affection for. Let them know that they have a good name. <laughs> That is, writ that is worth more and more desirable than any great riches. Happy Father's Day.